Physics and destruction simulations are some of the most satisfying things to create in 3D and visual effects. I'm always blown away by the spectacular destruction scenes in blockbuster movies like Godzilla, King Kong, 2012 and many more. In this video, you will see some key ideas to keep in mind for creating gorgeous physics simulations. I personally use Blender for all my destruction simulations, but whether software you want to use Houdini Blender, 3D Max, PowerPoint or wherever doesn't matter, because this is a general explanation of ideas and principles you can apply in any 3D software. When working on simulations, I always monitor four key elements. The number of objects in the scene, the total vertex count, the frame per second, and the render times when exporting. At the end of the day, it's all about finding a reasonable balance between these four factors. The goal is to get the best visual quality while maintaining decent performance, so you can work efficiently. First important thing, it's absolutely important to detail the destruction only where necessary. Block the camera position first, this way you can add high detail destructions only in areas closer to the camera, saving resources. It also helps to separate part of the structure and destroy it independently. This looks more realistic than just disintegrating an entire building, and is easier to compute. Another technique I love, instead of fracturing an entire building into unnecessary tiny pieces, focus all the possible details only in some big cracks. We can say. This creates the illusion of complexity while keeping the simulation very efficient. For example, in RBD Lab add on, you can use the edge method for doing exactly this thing. Another trick delete glasses behind buildings. If it's never visible, it's a waste of resources to simulate. These are just general tips. If you want step by step tutorials, check out my Patreon link down below. Anyway, working with 3D projects can quickly turn into a cluttered mess, endless folders, cryptic file names, and waste hours just trying to find that one asset. If you are a 3D artist, I guess all of this mess sounds familiar, right? That's why more and more 3D professionals are turning to digital asset management tools to streamline their workflow. For example, Blueberry AI, a platform that I have been trying recently. Blueberry AI is a powerful asset management platform designed specifically for 3D files. It gives you instant previews of your assets, whether it's Maya, 3D Max, Blender, or over 100 other formats. No more jumping between different softwares just to check grids, UVs, materials, or lighting. But here is where it really stands out. You can search files not just by name, but also with images or even rough descriptions, like for example, a man with a sword perfect for reusing old assets or digging through massive libraries, version tracking, large file transfer, and team collaboration tool to keep your projects organized and accessible. Seamless integration with most 3D software and project management tools like Jira and Slack. Got hundreds of 3D files sitting around? Give Blueberry AI a try, it's free. You will find the link down below in the description of this video. Stop blaming your hardware. Before thinking you need a supercomputer, focus on optimizing your workflow as much as possible. Blender, for example, has countless ways to speed up performance and lighten heavy scenes such as simulations. A few years ago, I managed to create this entire VFX shot using a very weak 4GB graphic card with 64GB of RAM, so literally not a powerful computer, honestly. I mean, nowadays even phones have better specs. When working in 3D, you always have two options build everything in 3D or combine CGI with real footages. Most of the time, the second option is the best. Render times are much faster because you are rendering only a small part of the frame, after all, and it looks more realistic by default. Now, the next tip that I want to give you. Highly suggested, model your building from scratch starting from some real pictures. This ensures a geometry that is easy to handle and suitable for destruction, while keeping the final result photorealistic at the same time. It might seem easier to just download existing models, but most are either not ready for destruction or look too much CGI-ish. Speaking of using real photos, you can stick a building's texture onto a 3D model in two ways by camera tracking a real video, or by projecting a single image using FSpy. FSpy is a free, easy to use tool that lets you align 3D perspective with a photo in seconds. It's perfect for projecting building's texture before simulating destruction. It was very popular many years ago, but you have to know that even in the newest Blender version like 4.4 and beyond, FSpy still works flawlessly. Speaking of which, many people struggle to install the FSpy add-on in Blender. Here's a quick fix. Don't click the big green button that you see here. Instead, scroll down and click on download the latest version. You are welcome. 
Split your model into multiple layers, just like real world structures. Different materials should have different destruction settings. This brings realism to a new level. Adding constraint instantly makes destruction more natural. Most destruction scenes on YouTube look like this. This is not realistic, please stop doing that. So what are constraints? Imagine one constraint being like something that keeps connected to rigid bodies until it breaks, of course. Now, for the station simulations, we need thousands of constraints. And of course, creating thousands of constraints manually would be insane, right? Luckily, there are automated ways to create and control entire groups of constraints altogether, either with Blender inbuilt functions or with some add-ons. A common mistake I see, many people simulate bridges or buildings where pieces just sit on top of each other. In reality it's not like that, make your best to tie everything strongly together, connect multiple different elements together. The rooftop should be attached to the walls of a house for example, a pillar should be attached to the bridge and so on. In RB Lab add-on, these constraints are called adjacent constraints and it helps creating automatically for you these adjacents where you need them. Every constraint links to rigid bodies, but you can also disable collisions between them. This massively speeds up physics calculations without affecting realism that much. Simulations tend to crash when undoing actions with Ctrl Z. Here is a fix. Go to Edit, Preferences, Interface, enable Developers Extras, go to Experimental and turn on Undo Legacy. This makes undoing slightly slower but far more stable. Keep in mind that your first result is never the best. Don't settle. Analyze your simulation, make a list of possible improvements and tweak your scene multiple times. To stay organized, I save incremental versions and this lets me go back to any checkpoint if needed. Of course, everyone wants to finish project fast, but hey, when you finish that project, extend the deadline by just one week only for making improvements. It will make a massive difference in quality. In the last years, Blender has introduced geometry nodes. Geometry nodes can handle way more particles than Blender's old particle system, simply because they can finally be rendered as single points, instead of cubes or actual meshes like in the past. So, here is a trick I recently tested, converting old school particles into geometry nodes single points. Why? because Blender becomes way faster in both viewport navigation and rendering. You can really use millions more particles without crashes. Paul Jord, a very creative artist, brilliant mind, stress tested Blender's particle system and was able to reach 6 million particles before crashing. But in those tests, he was using the old school heavy particle systems. I mean, each of his particles was a tiny cube and every single cube has 8 vertices. What if instead we used a single vertex per particle? I'm sure that limit can reach many more extra thousands of millions this way. It would be interesting to test it. Stay tuned! Thank you.